Hey guys, today we're going to go through my entire camera collection, and I think I've got a bit of a problem. Let's get to it. Alright, so the reason I'm making this video is because I am downsizing my camera collection. I am getting tired of hauling two massive heavy tubs of camera gear out of the closet every time I need a UV filter, so the stuff I don't use is getting liquidated. I'm putting it on eBay, getting rid of it. Honestly, some of this stuff here I have never even used, but I figured before I do that I'd make a video and go through each and everything one by one, uh, kind of explain how I got it, and yeah. That's about it. So I guess we'll start off on the top right corner up here. This is my Polaroid land camera. I have the original manual for it. It's still in really good shape. I actually have the original case over here too. The original, this is the cold clip for use in cold weather. Still has the card inside, explains how to use it business reply mail from Polaroid themselves from back in the day. Have some flash bulbs for the original flash with the filter, the bluing filter. Some of the free included mounting cards for mounting your Polaroid pictures onto. They're like just pieces of card stock, cardboard stuff. And the camera itself, which is in really good condition. This was a Getting this open here with one hand is going to be a challenge. This was actually a gift from a friend of the family who found out I liked photography. This is one of the things that's probably going to be sold simply because I never ever use it and I don't foresee myself ever using it. I can never remember how this thing is supposed to open. It has something to do with the two pins up top. See, this is step one. Um, I feel like I have absolutely no clue how to open this. I did at one point in time. Um, it works, works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's still in really good shape. The optics are still fairly clear and everything. Um, I just literally, never ever use this. I think this takes pack film. Um, not really sure because I've never used it. It didn't come with any film and I'm probably never going to use it in the future. And I'm not a collector. I take pictures. I like taking pictures. I don't really like accumulating stuff, which is why I'm kind of going through here and liquidating my collection. And the overheating light just clicked on on my camera. Next up is this Pentax ME Super here with the 50 millimeter f1.2. I never really got into the Pentax system. This was another gift from a family member. The camera doesn't actually work, unfortunately, but the lens does, the lens is fine. Um, I like how small this camera is, but it's again probably going to be gotten rid of simply because it doesn't work. Um, next thing was a garage sale find. I actually got this for free. This is a Kodak Instamatic 104. I think Dick Van Dyke used to do all the commercials for these. It actually still has a roll of, I believe it's 126 film, loaded in the back with 18 exposures on it. Had those when I got it. Uh, maybe I'll develop it and see what's on them. Still have some flash cubes, Sylvania Blue Dot flash cubes. Um, I did take a picture with this. I don't know if the camera works, but it made the clicky sound and the flash cube went off, so it probably still works. Next up is the Minolta SRT201. I got this for $20 at a garage sale. Has the Rokor X PG 50mm f1.4 lens on it. This is a fully mechanical camera. I absolutely love this camera. Still have all of the original manuals in the original Minolta bag. The owner's manual. An entire depth of field table for every Rokor X lens Minolta made at the time. Just pages and pages of field tables. A uh, guide to all of the lenses Minolta had. Their SR system. It's got some example pictures in there actually in full color. 
some really nice pictures. And all of this stuff is in like brand new condition, basically. This was a really good find. Still the original warranty cards that were never sent in. One is for the camera itself, and the other is for the lens. This one's for the lens. Um, camera works absolutely fine. I still actually have the original mercury battery that's in this, and it still works perfectly fine. So as of yet, I've not had to look into buying wine cells or zinc air batteries or whatever. Um, this camera is way fun to shoot with. It's just that mechanical shutter sound is awesome. Yeah, I love this camera. Absolutely to bits. Um, I used to have more Minolta bodies. I've gotten rid of them over the years. This is some of the lenses left over from that. This I think is an 80 to 200 macro lens. I think this is an f4.5 continual 80 to 200. Two 2x teleconverters. One has the original manual for it still. Um, if I shoot with the SRT, the 50 millimeter f1.4 is always on it. So I don't really need all these other lenses. I never use flashes. I'll probably end up getting rid of those. This is a Vivitar 28mm f2.8 prime lens. This was actually the first camera lens I ever got when I got into photography. Probably going to hang on to that one. Vivitar Thyristor Flash still works perfectly fine. This one has a loose connection in the battery department, which is a shame because it's a really nice flash. Um, but aside from that loose connection, it still works perfectly fine. For filters, I've got polarizers for 55, 52, and 49 millimeters, a couple of hoods, skylight filters, UV filters, tungsten filters, the basic filters. Probably going to keep most of that stuff just because it goes on all of the gear. Two of these little, they're called negative inspectors, I believe. Come on, focus camera. Nope, it's not going to do it. Is that really so hard to focus on? Okay, well, whatever. It's a negative inspector. They're little magnifying glasses for looking at your film when you've had it developed. Uh, Psychonic light meter. This is a little, let's see if I can get the thing off. A little selenium light meter. Still works perfectly fine. I just never use it because all of my cameras have light meters built in. Original manual for that as well right here. A uh, whole big, huge, long PC sync cable with a PC sync to hot shoe adapter thing for off camera flashes for the really old cameras like the SRT and the Pentax. Uh, I'm really not doing this in any specific order. This is just an empty film can for Konica SRG100 film. Never heard of it, never shot it. It was a CNK or C41 process. Never heard of CNK. Maybe that's what they called their motion picture film. I don't know, it's just a cool can. It's completely empty, there was no film in it when I got it. Got it for free at a garage sale. And then this is my stack of old magazine, paper, booklet things relating to film photography. First up is the Kodak Black and White Darkroom Data Guide. This is just a huge data guide for tons of developing times, temperatures, for a whole bunch of different black and white films and a whole bunch of different black and white chemicals. This is all printed on like a plasticky waterproof paper so you can actually keep it in a dark room and reference it under a safety lamp. And the camera just overheated. We'll be back in a second, folks. It's the worst part about this camera is definitely the overheating. So where was I? Now that the camera's cooled off. Um, darkroom data guide. All printed on waterproof-ish paper. Useful. Not something I ever use. Don't develop black and white film. I might hang on to this though, because this book's kind of cool. Not something you see every day. Next thing is a different guide to Minolta's SR system. This one's not quite in as good of shape, but it's newer. This is for more of their 80s era lenses, covers, 
just a whole mess of them. Everything from the fisheye lenses, to the telephotos, to the tilt shifts, to the Verisofts. Ba mm -hmm. Bellows macros, macro tubes, flashes, Super 8 cameras apparently. Whole big bunches of stuff. Next thing, one of the oldest books I own, How to Make Good Pictures by Eastman Kodak. This was in the book when I got it. It's actually a very, very old postcard. This is copyrighted, I believe 1932. Explains a whole bunch of just really basic stuff about the way camera lenses work. Actually, some of it's not so basic, it's actually pretty technical. Basics about composition and things like that. It's a neat book. It's actually in pretty good condition for being almost 100 years old. Again, garage sale, 10 cents. Next thing, the Kodak Master Photo Guide. This is like a little pocket. I honestly don't know who or why anyone would ever use this. Um, it does have some like tables for fill flash if you're out in sunlight. This is designed to like kind of be carried with you like anywhere you go taking pictures. It has like a little, I don't know, black cat meter kind of doodad. Examples of what different colored filters do on black and white films. Just some information that you might want to have on you while you're out taking pictures. And then comes the advertisements. First is, this is a Hoya filter advertisement pamphlet thing with a whole bunch of examples of Hoya's different filters for their filter system from back in the 80s. Kodak film thing. A whole bunch of different kinds of film. Little tells a bit about them. Some old films in there. Verichrome pan. That ain't made anymore. Ektachrome 400. That would be nice to have these days. I wouldn't mind some 400 slide film. No one makes fast slide film anymore. Uh, what is this? Minolta answers seven questions most asked by new camera owners. Let's see if we can open this up here. What do interchangeable lenses do? How do I know when I need an interchangeable lens? What can I do with a wide angle lens? What can I do with a telephoto lens? Yeah, just basic stuff, but it's from the 80s. It's by Minolta, which I kind of like. It's just a neat thing. Again, got it for free. Seattle Filmworks Photographer's Guide. I think the Seattle Filmworks is actually still in business. I don't know if they do film anymore though. Choose between prints or slides. Kodak motion picture film you can actually get developed. I'm assuming that was like the predecessor to their vision series. Supposedly their process can handle overexposed slides much better than Kodak's E6 process. Not really sure how or why. Maybe they just adjusted for it. I don't know how they would do that without developing first though. Little just advertisement thing. Photo News by Kodak. Let's see here. I believe this covers Kodak's, yeah, new at the time VR films. Kodacolor VR. I think this stuff came in 200, yeah, 100, 200, 400, and 1,000 speed. This thing folds open for the massive poster. It recommends all of the exposures. And this thing came out in, I think, 80s, maybe 84, 85, somewhere around there. So most of the cameras by then had built-in light meters. I don't know why they would bother including this huge exposure chart thing. This side includes some examples of the code of color, their VR 1000 films. Again, it's just stuff you really can't get anymore. So I kind of don't pass it up when I come across it at like garage sales or something. And people usually want 10 cents, or maybe it's even free. Kodak's Guide to Filters and Attachments, circa 1980 something. It actually might list the publication date. Um, nope, I don't see it. $2.07. This is a list of almost every filter made and how it can be used to its fullest extent. 
it is really cool how many filters they used to make from gels to screw-ons and the nice thing is it comes with examples throughout the entire book of like what different colored filters do just I mean there were so many filters they made back then for turning that look into that look and everything in between I mean you had softening filters you had rainbow filters like they did that with the rainbow water coming down in film somehow and it boggles my mind to think they could do all this stuff without Photoshop here. Multiple exposure tutorials, macro stuff, red filters, I mean, just anything you can imagine. Compensating filters. It's a really cool book to look through. It's actually a fairly big book. Filters and attachments. I think I paid 10 cents for that at a garage sale. That completes my paper goods. We'll get back to the cameras now. Just bought this camera. This is a Minolta Maxim 5. This is the newest 35 millimeter film camera I have. It's got the 28 to 80 F 3.5 to 5.6 D series zoom lens. Um, it's a modern camera. It has 14 segment matrix metering. It's just, it's more advanced. If I want to take a picture and I want to know it's going to turn out good, then this is what I go for. Uh, when I don't need to do or want to do any more creative type thing. Um, I haven't actually put a roll through on this. I just got this yesterday. So that's that. I paid 10 bucks for that. This is a Minolta Maxim 7000. Um, I got this on Craigslist for $35. It came with the 50mm f1.7 lens that's attached to it, and the beer can back there, the 70 to 210 f4. Really liking that lens, really liking the 517s. It seems a bit sharper than my MD 517 that I used to have and sold on an X370 body that I also used to have. Um, Autofocus on this camera is honestly not as bad as I was expecting. For being the world's first autofocus system, it actually does a pretty good job. It's accurate, it's just slow. Um, I like that this camera uses the standard shoe mount instead of the stupid Sony My Shoe, and you need that little adapter. For the newer system, my NEX that I'm shooting this on is the exact same way. It takes that same stupid little adapter. Thankfully, the newer Sony cameras don't. Uh, this camera doesn't do anything fancy. Really, it's one step up from like the AE1 program that we'll get to in a second. I don't know if I'll keep this or not. I didn't think I would like this camera, but I actually really do. The ergonomics are kind of nice. It's bigger and fits into my hand better. And I actually find I really enjoy shooting this, so I don't know, we'll see. Um, next up is a lens. This lens also came for free with the Maxim 7000. This is the, come on camera, focus, I believe in you. This is the ProMaster Spectrum 7, 70 to 300 millimeter, f4 to 5.6. 70 to 300 with that f-stop is not really a focal length that I'll use very often. Um, I may end up selling this lens. If I sell the 7000, I'll probably sell this lens with it. It's really, I've not actually shot a roll of film with this lens yet, so I don't know, but that focal length and those apertures aren't something I find myself using very often. Generally, I'm honestly just using a 51.4 prime. Back here, we've got, starting to get into the digital, this is the Canon FD. I think this is, yeah, Canon FD 50mm f1.8 SC lens. Um, this is what most of my YouTube videos are videoed with, the ones that don't require me holding the camera. It is mounted to the Pexico Focal Reducer for my NEX7 or any Sony E-mount APS-C camera. Um, it's a great lens for video. Soft around the edges, a bit of vignetting at f1.8. Stop it down to f2.8 though and you are absolutely golden. Great picture quality. The focal reducer actually works really good. I use this lens on digital all the time if I'm not using an autofocus lens. This is the one I go for. Um, the nice thing about having the digital system be fully compatible with no crop with the FD lenses is if I need to travel light, I can just bring one lens set. 
the FD glass. And I have it on both film and digital that I'm shooting this with right here. Um, I bring my AE-1 program body. This was $20 at a garage sale. Came with the 28 2.8 that's mounted on it right now. That's the new FD version. And it is basically in brand new condition. It works absolutely perfectly fine. Initially, it did have the uh, shutter squeak issue, but I fixed that with some, I think I used sewing machine oil, and it has not made a sound since. It works perfectly fine. The batteries are easy to get a hold of. The overheating light just came back on on the camera. Time to hurry this along. This camera came with its original manual as well. Also came for $20 with the boxed Canon 188A speed light flash with the original manual. A teleconverter here for the FD mount system. This was made by, I don't know if you can see that or not, JC Penny. Yeah, JC Penny used to make camera gear apparently. And there's a JC Penny folk reducer. Next up is this lens. This is one of my favorite lenses. This is a Vivitar 80 to 200 millimeter f4.5 continual 58 millimeter focal, or sorry, 58 millimeter filter thread for Canon's FD mount system. This lens is so sharp. And f4.5, not as much, but if you go down to one click on the aperture ring to 5.6, it is tack sharp. I mean, it, as at f5.6, it's as sharp as the 51.4 Rokor PG at f5.6. I mean, it is that good. This is what I use generally if I'm taking pictures of a stage performance, a concert, a dance, something like that that's going to be on stage. This is the lens I go for with either the digital camera or the Canon AE-1 program. Um, it just works great. It's a great zoom lens, really clear image. Love it. Also for $20 in this whole, all my FD stuff came in the same $20 uh, garage sale find. Canon A1 power winder, A2 power winder for the A1. Yeah, that's not confusing. Um, again, loose connection in the battery compartment, just like that flash we looked at a minute ago. I don't mind winding a roll of film. Winding the film isn't something that bothers me. I do put this on sometimes, just leave it empty without batteries for the ergonomics. That little extra length on the bottom is really nice. Helps with the ergonomics. Yeah, I'm a klutz. With the AE-1 program, um, it does work good though. I mean, having your film wind through, it's just the winding really doesn't bother me. Um, again, original manual with that as well. Getting into the more odd cameras here, we have of course your every Instagrammer must have one Instax Mini. Um, I have a Polaroid. Actually, that is not in this setup here. I just realized I didn't get my Polaroid out. A Polaroid 600. Um, but the film for it, Impossible Project film, is so expensive. It's just, it's cost prohibitive to shoot, in my opinion, unless you really, really want to use that old Polaroid. So, picked up one of these Instax minis on eBay, the black model, because, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the rainbow colors. It works great. Um, I wish I had a self-timer. That's kind of my, my only complaint with this. Other than that, though, the film is relatively cheap compared to the Impossible film. Um, the lens is fairly good. It's, it's a nice camera. Minolta Hymatic AF2. I actually have up in my closet the original box for this camera. This camera came in its original box, original packaging for $2. I did a video on my channel about this camera a while back. Kind of in, I think I unboxed it. Um, again, works perfectly fine. Absolutely fantastic. I think this runs on triple A's, which are easy to get a hold of. I just, especially now that I have the Maxim 5, I don't find myself using a point and shoot film camera, although the shutter on this is really, really quiet, which I really like. I may end up selling this 
and buying a waterproof one. Minolta made a camera called the Weathermatic Dual 35, which was kind of like the same thing, but it had two focal length lenses. You had a little button on the front that would toggle between 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter. And the whole thing was white waterproof, weather sealed, which would be really nice to have as for like kind of a high risk film camera where there's a chance it's gonna get wet or dirty or something. And I could just wash it off because this is not, the Hymatic here is not a very durable camera, although the lens on it is really nice. It actually takes some really good, sharp, clear pictures. More getting into the digital stuff, the Sony Mavica. I've done a video on my channel about this camera already. The floppy disk camera, what can I say? It's a very old digital camera. The pictures, well, they're not horrible. They are certainly not great. Um, the battery on that camera though, literally lasts forever between charges. Like you charge that thing once a month and you're golden. Wish I could say the same for this one. This is the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition. You've seen the video on my channel about this probably, maybe I made one. If you haven't, go watch it. Um, aside from battery life, this camera's great. It shoots 2.7K video at a high bit rate. It's, it's an action camera. Doesn't have in-body stabilization, which would really be nice, but yeah, it's, it's an action camera. I don't do action camera-y stuff too often, so it covers my needs. Um, last thing, I guess, is this Kodak lens cleaning paper. These came with the SRT, which I believe was bought sometime in the early 70s and years, I can tell. And the original owner didn't use them up. I still haven't used them up. Every new lens I get, I clean up with these papers. I still have a lot of these papers left. They are very thin. They're thinner than tissue paper. Um, and they work absolutely great. They don't leave any streaks with the lens cleaner whatsoever. I love these things. And I've got plenty of them to keep loving them for quite some time. And that is about it. The overheating light is on. This is actually the longest continual recording session I have ever done on this camera. Uh, we're at 18 minutes on the clock. So we still haven't overheated, that's cool. Probably helps that it's the dead of winter. But that is the camera collection as it sits. It's going to be shrunk by probably about half in the coming few weeks as I try and sell off the stuff that I never ever use. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button on the way out and consider subscribing if you'd like to see what I make next. I'll see you guys next time.